Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net and this acrylic painting tutorial is going to show you how to paint Sunflower Farm on an 11 by 14 inch canvas with acrylics. We're going to go ahead and get started. So I am using an 11 by 14 canvas and I already drew my horizon line on this. This is a line that's just been drawn right down the center of the canvas. So find the middle of the canvas and draw a line. And I'm using the two colors, Ceruline Blue and Titanium White, as well as the three quarter inch flat wash brush. So the first thing I'm gonna do is paint the sky. I'm gonna start at the top with that light blue color mixed with the white and my sky. So this light blue color had to be mixed with that white just to lighten it up a little bit, but the sky is gonna be a little bit darker at the top and it's gonna get lighter as it goes down. I'm doing these angled strokes and they're allowing the blue and the white to blend together to create a, like a variation of it. And I like to leave it unblended so some areas will look a little bit lighter, some will look a little bit darker. So it creates some color variation in that sky. But basically what I'm gonna do is fill the entire sky up from above the horizon line to the that line. That line is the horizon line. Um, so I'm just gonna keep doing these angled strokes. I'm just kind of flip-flopping my brush, doing longer angled strokes, allowing that blue and the white to blend. And as I work my way down, I'm gonna gradually add a little bit more white. So as I'm reloading my brush, I'm just grabbing a little bit more white on the tip of my brush, and I'm continuing to paint down to that horizon line. So eventually this guy is just gonna get a tad bit lighter right there above the horizon line, but it's not gonna be all the way white. It's just gonna be a really light blue. So I'm just gonna continue doing that angled strokes. Sometimes I like to call these X style strokes because you're literally painting a bunch of big X's and allowing those colors to blend. So I'm adding more white here towards the bottom. If you feel like the paint's not spreading, you can add tad bit of water to your brush it gets the paint to flow a little bit better but generally this area should be pretty thin so I'm not slapping the paint on thick at all just a little bit of paint on the brush nice thin layer in that sky if you end up going down below the horizon line a bit you can I'm going to go back up here and add just a little bit more blue up at the top. You just want to be careful because this may already be dried up here. So once it's dry, it's going to be harder to work that paint and blend it some more. So there's my sky. And I'm just going to use the leftover blue on my palette to go ahead and paint the sides of the canvas. I'm just painting the side of the canvas that has the blue sky and I'm not going to do blue all the way around because I'll be extending the other colors in this painting on the sides of the canvas. I'm going to go ahead and rinse and load my palette with some deep green permanent. You also need to freshen up your titanium white if you don't have any more titanium white on the palette. I'm going to rinse and dry. I'm going to make a light yellow green color and I'll load my palette with some yellow here in just a second. I'm going to grab a whole bunch of white, a little bit of green. This needs to be a really light color because we're going to be doing the field and the lightest color of the field is in the distance. So we're going to make this a light green color. This is cad yellow medium hue. You can also use like a primary yellow or any yellow. So just a little bit of yellow in there. I'm going to grab a big chunk of white, kind of mix that. It should be, it should look like a really light yellow spring green color. So just keep in mind that this is the lightest part of our landscape. So um, it's only going to get darker from here as we work our way down. I added a little bit of water in there just um, to boost that flow of that color. So I'm going to take my brush, the tip of it, start above the horizon line and paint a little bit of a hill going above the horizon line, but I'm not that much above that line. And I'm going to go ahead and paint that in solid. I'm going to go about two to three inches down with that light spring green color. I'll take my three fingers over here on the left and kind of make a mark. So that's as far as I'm going to go down with that color. And I'm just going to go ahead 
and paint that in solid. So as I'm using up that mixed color on my palette, I will mix it up again. It's okay if you mix your color and all of a sudden, oh, that's not the same shade of green. That's okay. I uh, like when that happens, it gives it a little bit of variety and some color variation. We can always blend it back up into the original color but you can see how that got slightly darker and that's okay. Grabbing little bits of water just to spread that out. It's a very thin layer of paint. So I'll be painting the next layer of land and this is going to be a darker green. So I'm just gonna grab a big chunk of that deep green permanent, but keep in mind that we don't wanna go too dark here because we still have a darker green to do after this. So I'm just gonna take the tip of my brush and kind of paint an uneven line over that area. And I'm gonna go ahead and paint it in solid, grabbing little amounts of that deep green permanent on my brush and I'm painting it in. So I'm gonna go down about the same amount of space, so two to three inches. Just make sure that it's filled solid so no canvas showing through. I will not be doing a second coat on these land colors. So you wanna make sure that it's all filled in solid. Um, so adding the bit of water in there kind of helps Get it to flow so you can get some good coverage in there but just keep going down um, you want to leave a gap at the bottom because the bottom part is going to be our darker green so i'm just going to go this way um, go down a little bit further about two to three inches left of space at the bottom it does not have to be exact so if you want to measure like three fingers on the bottom you can for the bottom we're going to do just the deep green permanent not mixed with anything so if it helps, you can rinse your brush off and dry it. I still have the other color on my brush, but I'm going to just use that deep green permanent color and maybe grab a little bit of yellow in there too for some variation. But for now, I'm just filling that up with that darker green. It should stand out against the other land and I'll have it overlap just a little bit. So just kind of an uneven line that slightly overlaps that middle land area and just do left and right strokes on there. Go all the way to the bottom of the canvas, filling that up. Um, you wanna make sure that your strokes are going all the way across the canvas. So if you stop halfway in the middle, your brush strokes will show through. Um, grabbed a little bit of that yellow just to kind of give that green a little bit of a, a kind of a yellow green look. You don't have to do that if you don't want to, but sometimes I like just grabbing some extra colors in there. I'm just gonna continue with that yellow and fill that up, fill that whole space up at the bottom, and we'll have our three layers of land finished after this step. So there's my finished land and I'm just gonna go ahead and use the rest of my greens on the palette to extend the greens on the side of the canvas. If you want to, you can have them all be the same shade of green. I'm just gonna take this same shade and kind of go up. So if you wanted to do that light green and extend it on the side and then the medium green, in fact, you could kind of improvise, grab a little bit of white in there, kind of make it look like it's on the side. I never am too detailed with the sides of the um, paintings. So there we have it. We have all the sides painted, um, the land. We wanna go ahead and let this dry before proceeding or at least wait for the sky to be dry because we're going to be doing the barn next um, and the barn's going to be in the sky area so the green doesn't necessarily have to be dry right away. I'm going to load my palette with three colors, uh, Mars Black, Burnt Umber, and Pyrrol Red. I'm using a number four round brush. I'm grabbing a little bit of this brown and watering it down slightly. I will be painting the shape outline of the barn. So our barn is a very, very basic house shape. I'm gonna start at the roof and paint two diagonal lines. 
and then two vertical lines going down to the horizon line. So the height of the barn is about two inches and the width of the barn is about four inches if you wanted to measure that just to get the sizing right. And then I'm gonna do the, the right part of the roof. So I'm gonna do a horizontal line extending out towards the right, diagonal line parallel to the other diagonal line, another horizontal line and a vertical line. So very basic house shape. There's our vertical line that goes to the horizon line. And then I'll touch up this roof angle over here on the left so it kind of has the eave hanging down past our vertical line. And so we're going to be painting our barn in next. So very basic. Um, this is going to be, a, this is a half inch flat brush. You can really use any brush for this. If you don't have a half inch flat brush, any small flat brush will work for this technique. Um, I have Pyrol Red on my palette and I grabbed a little bit of that burnt umber. So I mixed a little bit of the brown with the red. Just, it gives the red kind of more of that rustic barn look. I know my hand's in the way. But basically, I'm just dragging my um, strokes down vertically, except on the angle, I just kind of cut in with the brush on the angled part of the roof. But the rest of it is all vertical strokes. So you just get in there. And if you want it to look more rustic, you can add a little bit more brown and just do the streaks of the brown that kind of blend gently with that red. As so I'm just going to continue to add our red in that barn, going vertical strokes using the full width of the brush. And you want to go down to that grass as much as possible without going over it. If you do paint red over the grass, that green field area, we can always go back and do green over that. And then the right side of the barn, if you want that to stand out a little bit different, you can add a touch more brown in there so it's slightly darker and it'll stand out from the front part. But I'm just going to go ahead, paint that in. Again, you need to do all vertical strokes using that full width of the brush, letting that brown gently blend with that red. And I left a little bit of a space right there where that line is. Um, I just took my T-square ruler and just kind of made sure these lines are parallel as I'm painting them in. Kind of helps to uh, make sure your lines are straight. And then go ahead and I'm going to paint that line. I'll, later on I'll do a little white mark on that line so it stands out a little bit better. I'll make sure that all this is covered. Are we doing the roof next? So instead of just rinsing my brush, I'm going to wipe it off. Grab some of that burnt umber color, a little bit of black. So a little tiny bit of burnt umber with a little, or a little bit of black with a lot of burnt umber. Um, I'm going to use the tip of my brush to outline the shape of that roof. And then I'm going to paint it in using diagonal strokes, a little bit of white on the brush too. Let them kind of blend together to create their own thing. So that white is blending with the brown, a little bit of black. I'm not going to keep going over it and blending it all the way because we have some different color variations in that roof. And I'm using the tip of the brush to outline the shape. A little bit of white on the tip of the brush at the top. Then I'm gonna grab the number four round brush and the Mars Black. Slightly water down that Mars Black, but not enough to where it's gonna be dripping. So I'm wiping the ferrule right there so that it's not gonna be a drippy thing because too much water is gonna cause problems. But I'm just gonna take that black and outline the roof. So I outlined that diagonal piece and the horizontal piece of the roof. And then I'm gonna get a little bit extra creative here and grab a little bit of white on that flat brush again and just do a few little brighter parts on the roof. Next, as long as that red is dry, we can go ahead and use our round brush and white to paint the door 
and the upper window piece of our barn. I'm going to rinse. And this is still that number four round brush. Grab the titanium white. And I'm just going to very, very carefully do the barn door. So very simple little rectangle shape line down the middle. And then X on both of those doors. So X and X. And then do a window. So a rectangle. And an X. So very, very simple. Barn is far away. We don't need to be doing a ton of details with it. And then I'm going to emphasize this line right here. Grab a little bit of white and red, maybe just a little bit more white on there. Do a vertical line so that part of the barn stands out a bit better. And then I can go in and kind of touch up the bottom. I know that part got cut off there on the camera, but I'm just taking that red and touching up the bottom, making sure that all that red is touching the green so that it's not floating and there's not green overlapping it. It's just all flesh to that field. So covering up all that green. I'm going to paint the windmill next and I'm going to grab black and white to make a gray. So I'm mixing black and white together to make a, a kind of a medium gray. A little bit of water on the brush and I'm just going to go ahead and this is still that number four round brush. So our windmill, and I like to do some variations, black, gray, white, kind of change that gray as I paint. I'm going to very lightly do a rect uh, rectangle, a triangle, and the triangle is going to go to, um, it's about the height of the barn and then a line right down the middle. So triangle, line down the middle, about the same height as the barn. And again, this, this windmill is way in the distance. We don't really need to do super, super details with it. I'm gonna do some horizontal lines all the way up and then little X's in each of those boxes. So the X's are gonna get smaller and smaller as you go up and eventually fade away. And then I'm gonna do the blades of the windmill next. So I'm mixing a medium gray again. I'm gonna start at the top of the triangle and make a little circle right there at the top. And then I'm gonna do strokes going in a circle all around. So I'm just painting lines using that um, dark to medium gray color going in a circle direction. And then I'm going to paint a circle over those lines. And then I'll do this large triangular piece sticking out. It helps if you have a little bit of white on your brush to kind of mixes with that gray a little bit. And I'm just going to paint a few more of the blades and they're just going to kind of go in a circle formation. And then I'll make these blades a little bit thicker. So I'm just pressing a little bit harder on my brush to make those windmill blades a little bit thicker. Then some white on the tip of my brush. I'm going to paint that little circle right there in the center again and then kind of redo that other circle that I created earlier. So just making that look like it's going behind the blades. Again, you don't have to be this detailed with your windmill. If you wanted to simplify it, you can because it's way in the distance. The next thing we're going to transition to are these sunflowers. So we have these large sunflowers that are in the foreground. So they're in the very front of the painting. So these are gonna be very large sunflowers. And I'm gonna be using a white chalk pencil to draw them out. So this first circle, the center part of this large sunflower, it's about three fingers in diameter. So about that width and it's above, it's up in the sky above our horizon line. So this is gonna be our largest sunflower, give or take in the painting. 
So I did a circle about three fingers wide and I'm gonna do the petals around that circle. So this is just a basic white chalk pencil. You can also use regular chalk. I like to use these pencils because you get a thinner line with your drawing versus the whiteboard chalk. It's kind of thick, but you can use whiteboard chalk or you can use a regular drawing pencil if you want. So these sunflower petals are kind of a teardrop shape and they go to a point. Some of these petals are going off to the side of the canvas because of the position of the flower. So your petals may also go off the canvas or depending on where you drew your circle, maybe they won't. So I'm just gonna draw these shaped petals all around the circle. So it's cut curve on the bottom and it goes to a point. You can kind of angle your petals differently if you want. You can have them kind of flowing to the left or the right. And then of course we can adjust this when we start painting it in. And then our stem right down the center, we'll make it kind of whimsy, a um, kind of a curvy shaped stem. And then our leaf, so we do a line. And the leaf is kind of a heart shape, so um, they're the point and then the top part kind of curves together in that center stem piece. So I'll do another leaf that's going off to the side. So I did the center stem and the bottom part kind of looks like a heart and this one went off to the side of the canvas. So there's my first sunflower. Then I'm just going to go ahead and draw another sunflower. So this one's going to be large too, but it's below, maybe a slightly smaller circle, um, below the horizon line. So it's overlapping our green field here. Same thing, do the circle first and do your petals all around that. And then you would do your stem. And then you would do the leaves. And the composition of these sunflowers, I arranged them going diagonally down. So there's gonna be another one down here in the lower left corner. This one's gonna be very close to that corner. So a lot of those petals are gonna go off the edge of the canvas, a little bit smaller. Actually, it's about the same size as that other one. So did the circle and our petals. And we don't see the stem on that one. Well, maybe there's a leaf popping up. And you can arrange this differently if you want to do sunflowers in different areas. So those are our larger ones. And then I'm going to go ahead and draw a few smaller ones that are behind there. So obviously the um, perspective, things are smaller in the distance. And then, so I did another smaller one. And then I don't recommend doing any more. It's going to be a lot of drawing to deal with. Uh, when we paint these in, we could always draw more or we can always just paint them in. Uh, but I'm going to be using a round bristle brush for our center sunflowers. So this is a, a brush that I use every once in a while for texture and trees, but it works nicely for sunflower center texture. And I'm just using that burnt umber color that's on my palette and grabbed a little bit of Mars black. And all I'm doing with this bristle brush is dabbing it and it's creating that texture. So that stippling texture, you just dab it, dot it and fill up your entire circle. It'll be kind of a spongy looking texture. You could even, if you wanna have some of that blue and the sky still show through, you can, otherwise you can just cover it solid. I'm gonna go ahead and cover it completely solid. So you're gonna go ahead and do that for each of your circles. So the burnt umber, black combination, just dabbing your bristle brush. And so this is a bristle brush because the, the um, bristles on the brush are not the synthetic fabric. They're kind of the natural um, scratchy texture, which is why I'm using it because it's creating that texture. If you don't have a bristle brush or if you don't want to use or get a bristle brush, you can use a regular round brush and just dot it. You can even use maybe cotton, um, cotton swabs. You can use those to kind of dot it or you can just paint your circle solid and then do some dots in there. Grabbing a little bit of red kind of adds some interesting color in there. So grabbed a little bit of that pyrrol red color that was left over from my barn. Just did a few little dabs in there. You can kind of see, gives it some color variation. So that's simple enough. You just, you're done painting your circles. Then we're gonna transition on to the petals of the sunflower. 
So the, for the petals, you'll need Cad Yellow Medium Hue, Titanium White, and your number four round brush. You'll also need your number eight round brush, and um, but you won't need that just yet. I'm going to start with this four round brush, and I'm going to mix white with yellow. And the reason why I'm mixing white with yellow is because yellow tends to not be have the greatest coverage when we're painting over another color, like for the sky here. By mixing some white into it, it's going to allow, it's going to make the yellow lighter. Well, it's going to allow it to have better coverage because white is such an opaque color. So I'm going to go ahead and paint each petal individually. It's helpful to outline the shape of the petal and just fill it in solid. So to get your petals to stand out, you want to kind of vary the amount of white and yellow proportion that you add to your brush. So you can see um, this one right here, I'm going to make it a little bit lighter so that it's going to stand out from another petal. So I added more white to my brush and I'm overlapping that petal and it, making it look like it's overlapping the previous petal. So this one, I'm going to add a little bit more white to it. It's a lot brighter than that previous petal. Smudge that one a little bit. Um, and when I overlap it, it's going to stand out from the petal next to it. So you want to kind of vary. If you want to do a pattern, a dark yellow, light yellow, dark yellow, light yellow, with each of the petals, you can do that. Um, it's not really that necessary to do that. You just want to kind of pay attention to what petals overlapping the other one. I'm going to make these petals go look like there going off the side of the canvas here since I extended my color on the side. So this one grabbed a little bit more white this time. I'm going to allow it to overlap the other, other petal so that it stands out. I'm just going to keep going in a um, circle to paint all these petals in. That one's got a little bit more yellow. It may help to have a towel on hand if your brush gets overloaded with color. You can wipe off the brush and then start to redo your colors there but that's this petal is going to kind of dip down and slant down so keep it simple i'm not going to go into super realistic details with these and then if you want you can go in there and grab some white on the tip of your brush and just kind of outline some of the sides of the petals to make it look like they're overlapping each other and I'm just going to make sure that the yellow touches all the way to our centerpiece. And then I'm going to grab my round bristle brush again and do this texture. I want to make sure that texture is touching the bottom of the petal. So I'm concentrating on the outer circle of that. And I'm just adding some more color so that it touches um, the petals or it slightly overlaps the, those bottom parts of the petals. So you just want to go ahead and repeat that technique for each of those sunflowers that you drew. I'll rinse my bristle brush off and set it to the side. And I uh, mentioned if you wanted to use a number eight round brush for the sunflower petals, it's a slightly bigger round brush than your four round. If that is helpful, if this four round is too small for you and you want a bigger brush, you can do that. You don't always have to use the exact same size brushes I'm using. But I'm just going to go ahead and repeat this technique again using the white and the yellow to kind of uh, make sure that your petals are like this one right here. I chose to add a little bit more white in there because I knew it was going to overlap um, the sunflower behind it. So you can see by adding that bit of white, it helps it stand out from the petal that it's overlapping. And then this part there's a lot of green to cover in this part so you may have to do a couple coats on these um adding a little bit more white in there is helpful it would take a while i mean what you could do is white it out first meaning you can paint all your petals white first and then wait for that to dry and then go back over it it's just an extra step that takes a little bit longer i kind of like just doing it this way double loading it in the white and the yellow but there's a couple different ways you can go about doing that if you're yellow isn't covering your dark green very well and i'm going to go silent here for a bit while i finish this sunflower up
And then I'm just going to go back with my bristle brush and make sure that that circle overlaps the bottom part of all of my sunflower petals. And then I decided to do another petal right here in the middle. One that goes, it's going to overlap my sunflower stem, but just felt like there should be another petal right there. Grab a bit of white, get the side of it to kind of stand out a bit better. And then of course, grab my bristle brush, make sure that circle center piece is overlapping. For this next sunflower, I'm going to do something unique here. I'm actually going to incorporate a little bit of orange into it. So to make orange, you want to grab a little bit of red, mix it with the yellow. You only need a tiny bit of red, so it's going to turn super dark even if you use the wrong proportion of red. So just a teeny tiny bit of red. Just going to make it kind of a slightly orange color. It might be darker because it's further away or maybe there's a shadow covering it or it's just a different shade of yellow um, but it's nice to have some different color variations in these sunflowers and they're not all the same kind of yellow but I'm going to do the same thing with that orangish yellow color make sure I add a white into that so that the white helps with the coverage and but the same technique our petals are smaller so we just are more loose in the technique And then I'll grab my bristle brush and again, do the same thing. Go back over that center part nope, to make sure that it is overlapping our bottom parts of the petals. And then same thing for our lower left sunflower and I'll incorporate a little bit of that orange in that one as well. This is a darker area so the coverage might be a little bit more harder but like I've been saying adding that bit of white in there helps to get your colors to show up more opaque. I'm going to go silent here while I finish the same technique with these petals as well. Also this one goes off the canvas so I'll extend my petals to the side of the canvas as well. The next thing we're going to do are the stems and leaves. I'm just going to go ahead, rinse everything off and freshen my cup. So I rinsed out the water and I um, have some fresh deep green permanent on my palette. I'll be using a number four round brush for this. So basically I'm going to paint over the lines that I drew with my chalk. Um, one thing that might be a little bit of challenge right here is if our bottom part is, it's dark on the bottom. So to create a little pop of contrast in that stem, so it stands out, you can grab a little bit of black, a teeny tiny bit of black into that green. It'll darken that green up instantly so that it will be dark enough to show up 
against any darker background. So the bottom part of our landscape is especially dark. And then do the stems on the leaves. And then I'm going to outline the outer part of the leaf. With that green. Again, you can grab a little bit of black for to get that green to pop. Um, I'm going to grab my number eight. So this is a number eight round brush. It's just, it's still a round brush, but it's thicker than the other one it's going to take up because the leaf is a big space. It's going to be easier to do it with a larger round brush. So to create the contrast in this leaf, I'm actually going to add a pop of white into the green. So I'm going to let that white and green kind of blend together. It's going to make a light green enough to create um, contrast so that leaf stands out. And then I'm actually just going to use that light green to create the, the, the lines on the leaf, so the lines that are kind of going diagonally on that leaf. And then I'm going to do the same thing to this other leaf. So starting with that darker green, kind of outlining the outer shape of the leaf and then start filling it in with that deep green permanent. So filling in the shape of it, kind of contouring strokes going in the direction of the leaf, grabbing a pop of titanium white to create that contrast on the leaf and doing some vein lines in the center, letting that white blend with the green. So nothing super detailed or anything like that. And then create some little bit of highlight in our stem. So I'm gonna grab some white, mix it with the green a little bit, and just do a line on one side going down the stem. And you don't have to go all the way down if you want, just adds a pop of brightness on that stem. So I'm just gonna repeat the technique for these stems and leaves for each of the sunflowers. So doing the, um, the middle part of the stem, doing the leaf, and using that white in that deep green permanent to create the vein lines and providing some extra contrast to that leaf. So when you add the white to the green, it's gonna allow it to pop and show up against our green field background. And then I'm actually alternating between the four round and the eight round because the four round gives you that the smaller strokes that you can use to outline the leaf, and then the eight round allows you to fill in the, a larger space using that pop of white to create the lines on the leaves, letting that white blend with that green. And then I'm just gonna repeat that same technique with the other leaf. And I'm gonna go ahead and continue on with this other stem. So make sure that color's dark and then fill this leaf in as well. If you wanted to paint some more leaves in there, you can. I didn't do too many because I didn't want it to be too busy. The We're gonna be doing more sunflowers here after this step. Doing the little the white for the lines on the leaf. And I can do a few touch-ups here and there. You just don't want to overwork it to where everything blends together and turns to the same color. So sometimes it's best to not do that many touch-ups. Later on, I might add a little bit of darker colors to get some of the leaves to stand out, give them some more contrast. But for now, since this is a sunflower field, we have other sunflowers that would be in the distance. 
Um, of course, you can simplify this painting by not doing the smaller sunflowers. You can leave it like this. But I'm going to go ahead and add more sunflowers because the more the merrier. So I've got my bristle brush ready. And these, I'm just going to dab our center pieces. So these are smaller. These are on this layer of land way in the distance. So I just have the, the round bristle brush, the burnt umber color, and the little bit of Mars black. And I'm doing the circle, that small circle. And I'm just dabbing my brush to create that circle. Again, if you don't have the bristle brush, you can just use a round brush to paint little dark brown circles. So those are all going to be sunflowers, obviously way smaller than the ones that are up front. And then we're going to do the same colors here. I'll be using the four round brush and the white and yellow combination. And because these are smaller, we're really not going to go into detail with our petals. I'm just going to do a simple uh, petal, small petal shape that's going to go around each of the circles. So you're just painting a standard flower petal going all the way around. That one actually grabbed some brown. So if your brown meshes with the yellow, that's okay. Actually gives it some interesting color in there. And you're just going to repeat that for each of the sunflowers. This painting is simple because those sunflowers aren't going to have all the stems. So we're not going to worry about all the stems and leaves for those. We're just going to leave them floating like that. And if you wanted to do stems, you can. You're more than welcome to. And I'm just going to repeat this. So yellow, if you wanted to grab a little bit of your orange for some of those sunflowers, you can do that. These little petals are really done in one or two strokes, maybe three strokes. So you really aren't going in much detail with them. Um, you could vary your colors all throughout. You can have some of the sunflowers be a little bit brighter, some be a little bit darker. It kind of helps to add um, different variety in them. Um, these two are going to be close together, so it's okay if your petals overlap. You just want to make sure that none of the smaller Sunflower petals are overlapping any, ones, any of the ones in the foreground. So these petals should definitely be going behind the larger flowers. They wouldn't be in front at all. So I'm just going to go silent here for a bit while I finish up the last few sunflowers in this part of the painting. I'm going to go over some of these other petals, not all of them, but some of them that need to be brightened up just a tad. And then rinse that round brush off and I'm going to do some more of the texture in the middle, just touching up that middle part, make sure that it's overlapping the petals the base of the petals. And I'm gonna go ahead and make some more sunflowers that are even further in the distance. And my round bristle brush is gonna to be too big for the center piece. So I'm gonna use the round brush and just dot very, very tiny circles. And I'm only gonna do a few of these. I'm not gonna have them go all the way to the barn. If you wanted them to go all the way further back, you can, but I, did not choose to do that. It would be a little bit complicated with the way the perspective is going with this painting. Um, but just tiny little dots and then tiny little petals. So these sunflowers are much further down the um, land and so not much detail at all. Like I said, if you wanted to do more, you can. It's up to you. And then maybe a few more smaller sunflowers. So I did the little brown dots and then I'll do the petals after that.
and I'm gonna do one little sunflower growing right next to our barn so I did the little dot and the petals and I'll do the little stem for that one rinse the brush grab some of the do some more of that dot stuff in the middle and then I'll grab some green to do the stem if you wanted to do more sunflowers next to it you can I just did the one did a few little leaves on that and then I decided to do just a few more sunflowers back here but I'm not going to have them go all the way to the barn because then that would require us starting to having to do some more stems and leaves and we just want to have these look like they're kind of in the distance. Maybe that's a hill, a different elevation of land so that's why they're kind of lower to the ground and we don't see the stems and leaves. Sometimes when we paint we make up our own rules with perspective and I'm pretty much almost complete with this painting. I'm just going to do a few different things here. Um, I mentioned earlier I wanted to do some darker lines on my leaves to get them to pop a little bit. So I just have a little bit of black uh, mixed with the deep green permanent color. And I just outlined the bottom parts of some of those leaves to get them to pop a little bit. And I would like to touch up my windmill here. So I'm gonna mix my gray color again. I wanted the ends of all the blades to be flat and not pointed. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just going back over those little blades, making the bottom piece more flat. Then I'm, I'm going to do one more thing here. I wanted to add a little bit of grass on the bottom of our barn here. So I'm mixing a green. You can literally do any green. I added white to the, hook, um, the deep green permanent color just so it'll stand out against the barn. But I just did little tiny pieces of grass blades that are overlapping our barn. It really kind of helps with the transition of that barn making look look like it is situated on the ground there not just floating on the horizon line so this tutorial is coming to its conclusion i'm going to go ahead and sign my name in the lower right area with a um this is a five zero round brush and i'm just slightly watering down some mars black i'm going to sign my name over here but that is it. I hope you enjoyed painting this really cheerful, fun sunflower farm painting with me. Thanks for painting with me and thanks for watching.